example starts with the FBI automated case support system, which was a system built for FBI agents in the mid 90s. And it used 1970s technologies like database and natural, the natural programming language. And the result was that a lot of people thought it was a bad system before it ever even shipped. But it's what the FBI was able to ship at that time. This is basically, you can think of it as the CRM, Customer Relationship Management System, for criminals and crimes, right? They need a big database of all their criminals. So this is where they store their federal case if they ever make one. It became quickly apparent that the ACS system wasn't going to live up to the needs of a modern FBI force and they needed a new system. Enter the virtual case file project. Virtual case file was envisioned as a replacement for ACS that would take the ACS platform, upgrade it, put a new skin on it, just make it a nicer experience and more usable and aggregate data across all of these disparate databases that the FBI had. True to form for any government office, the FBI went out and specced exactly what they wanted this software to do. They spent a lot of time doing this and then went out to contractors and said, hey, we're not a software development company, so we're going to ask you to do this. So we'd like you to bid on doing this work for us. Ultimately, the Science Applications International Corporation won the bid to develop the project, although there were a lot of other vendors that did some small pieces of it. Now, when the project kicked off, the projection was that it would be done in three years for the cost of $380 million. So virtual case files should have taken about that long and it cost about that much. Here's what actually happened. In 2001, coding started. Now, this was code being written by contractors, not FBI employees, although there was some project management going on back at the Hoover building where the FBI is headquartered. The project ran from 2001 to 2005, at which point it was determined that the project was so off track and things were so bad on this software development project that they're going to throw away all of the artifacts they'd created thus far. Nothing is salvageable, they said. So the American taxpayer picked up that bill at a cost of $170 million. Now, it turns out that the FBI had gotten a new director back in 2001. In fact, Mr. Robert Mueller became the director of the FBI five days before the September 11th attacks. And with the fits and starts of the virtual case file system, Mr. Mueller had to go before Congress several times to ask for money to refund the virtual case file project. This was a notorious software project that was being monitored all over the world. It appeared in CIO magazine on the front cover. We all knew this was going on. And Mr. Mueller would have to go to Congress and say, this software project is still off the rails. And in fact, he had to do that three times. By January 2005, it was clear that we were not going to get any value out of this system. So Mr. Mueller is in the position of doing what so many other executives have to do with failed IT projects, and that is simply start over. So that's what he did. He went back to Congress, received approval for a new project. This one totally different because it's called FBI Sentinel instead of the virtual case file system. Totally different, right? And that means that what they were going to do clearly was go about creating the software differently. Well, not so much. In 2006, Lockheed Martin again won a contract to fulfill a bunch of specifications that the FBI had created. And this plan that Lockheed Martin now proposed called for four phases of deployment of this new system at a cost of $450 million over six years. Now, the big difference between the 2006 awarding of the contract to contractors versus the 2001 awarding of the contract to contractors was this. Mr. Mueller was really, really positive that this time a plan-driven waterfall type approach to the problem would work. Well, what actually happened is that by 2010, only 1.5 of the four phases that had been done, almost all of the money had been spent, and two-thirds of their time was gone. At this point, outside firm named MITRE was asked to come in and perform an audit on the work that was happening on the Sentinel project. And here's what they found, that it would take another $351 million in six years to complete the project. So Mr. Mueller knew that he was going to have to go back to Congress and ask for money 
again. So we had this IT project in the early 2000s. That didn't work. And now we've got an, the same one, essentially, still running in the late 2000s. That's still not working. Give me some more money. It just really didn't add up. And he knew that this wasn't going to go well on Capitol Hill. So what did he do about it? Well, he went and he hired some people from the civilian sector. In other words, he went out to industry and he hired two agilists from Lehman Brothers, Jeff Johnson and Chad Fulgram. Chad Fulgram as CIO and Jeff Johnson as CTO on the Sentinel project. Well, what Mr. Johnson did after taking the reins of Sentinel was to cancel the outsourcing contract with vendors like Lockheed Martin and pull all development back to the FBI. So they went out and hired a development team. They built what they called a scrum studio in the basement of the Hoover building, which really was a focused team room where software developers created the Sentinel program. What happened next stunned a lot of people. With only 40 developers instead of the original 400 that Lockheed Martin had on the project, the software was deemed complete in a little over a year. And only $30 million had been spent. Remember that the original budget was for $450 million. Finally, in May of 2012, the field tests passed, showing that, in fact, Sentinel was ready to go. They still couldn't go live, however, because they were waiting on proprietary hardware to ship. Finally, in August of 2012, Jeff Johnson did a public demonstration of Sentinel in production. 